that's just to start. Uh, I would like to welcome our next presenter, Lars Kull, from the um, Department of Business and Management. And uh, we're looking forward to hear what Lars will tell us. Yeah, Th thank you very much for having me here. Uh, I hope you all here in this room can hear me when I talk in this loudness, is that right? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I, I would say I'm not going to give a, a, a speech now about uh, electronic education, uh, as many have done before, but I have a little comment. Uh, you should know I'm responsible for our executive education within the area uh, of business, um, business and economics, and we have around 650 students, which is qu quite a lot. I started this, uh, let's call it this trip, five years ago, where we had five incumbent, that means already established uh, branches of education. And uh, we, we mixed in blended learning in these. And I can tell you we have got a lot of experiences just in the exam uh, 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 period of last semester. Our 84 students in one course saw small videos up to seven minutes in each length, 1,200 hours in just three weeks. So, uh, and uh, well, we use, uh, as, and I totally agree with you, a very simple tool, which is YouTube, in a closed forum. Since then we can go in and see where is it they actually take the bar and pulls back. That might be where, what can we say, we should mass our powers and our efforts in, in future small movies. In the beginning, we made full classroom education, 20 minute speeches, for long, um, long lectures, Nobody saw them, but if you have formulas or small meanings and we do, do even not show up our faces, I got the five pounds or ten pounds anyway, but uh, uh, we do not even ourselves show up on the movies. We make a simple PowerPoint presentation and simply just put arrows and sit and talk, cost nothing. And some of the small movies, they are now in the 11th years of uh, recycling, so there is a lot of of extra. One thing I have to say which is very much important for me as, as an educator, that is we have not taken down the number of active classroom encounters uh, at all. This, uh, we see blended learning as a, let's call it, a, a learning booster, learning enhancer. And uh, we, we shouldn't, what can we say, brag um, too much about our results since if we do it, somebody would take our actually actual confrontation to hours away from us. Okay, what I'm going to do now, that is actually, we are going to talk about problem-based learning in the way we do it. And we have, for all our incumbent, already established educations, mixed in and always used uh, problem-based learning. I will tell you a little about our results, but what I would take as an example is actually five years, six years ago, I got the task of development, developing an MBA education, a class that you entertained, Mark one of, or, 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 yeah, and uh, we started that and said this must be with our trademark PBL, and we have developed further. So I will take that as my example of saying we are going to make something from the very beginning of uh, using PBL, and this is just me. I won't stop there. But first of all, I have to tell you the legal frame framework and the MBA education is a master education, which is it's very easy. It's 60 ECTS as master educations and master classes are everywhere. In Denmark, by the new legislation, half of the class must be in compulsory within the subject that constitutes the theme of the education. And that's how we build it up. Compulsory 30 and the rest 30. Main thesis and education for the 18th. And uh, one thing I want to tell you about, which we all know, I have been around at this university since 1991, and all of us know creating new educations uh, always come from initiative and by people, most times. And if we, in our mind, say this is the table, we are sitting around discussing a new venture together. You know what will happen. The guy that has the subject that is most interesting for everybody, he would try to get as much as of the table. Imagine the ECTSs and boom, boom, boom. 
I have been part of making many educations in this way, and it always ends up in being very, very good educations. But they, are, but they take color and notion from those who, are, who created them or those who are running them right now, right? And uh, when we got the task of making an MBA, and I have to say, this happened th three times with the MBA education over 15 years, and it didn't come out, it didn't wash, since people couldn't agree on that battle of ECTS. When I came in, we had to go another way, since I knew this was not, I recognized and liked the old way, but here we had the special dilemma, we knew people couldn't agree, one, and two, we also knew there is a r real world out there. And uh, we, instead what we did was we went out and said, what does the world around us, wherever in the world, expect from a person who has attended and got as an MBA diploma, right? And then we had to, it was very easy. We could look into one of the international uh, qualification and accreditation <coughs> bodies called EQUIS, and uh, we look actually at five different ones. The, I, I've just only took two with me here, but that ended up being much easier. Since then, I could say to all my colleagues, friends, this is actually within this uh, square, we have to get our outcome and uh, we have to make a distribution, and we are not going back to discuss and take the battle of ETTSs. Since, uh, since actually, when, when I did this method, uh, there was somebody, so one of the subjects which was strategy, it took bet up between 20 and 32% of the ECTSs everywhere. So it was very easy to say, okay, now it's here, it's 30, boom. And then it was much, much easier to build an education. Okay, but having built the education, but having decided of the distribution of ECTSs, we also took the commitment that we would anyway use our problem-based learning model. And having had for us, actually our educations are some of the oldest, uh, the graduate diplomas at the university with more than, at that time, 50 years on the wheels in Aalborg, being actually here on behalf of the Copenhagen Business School in Aalborg before the university was started and taken over. We knew how to do it, but we also said we want to make something new since guys like, like Uffe and maybe you in the future attending an MBA class is not like a normal student. You come Wednesday, two o'clock, two to three o'clock and stay on till Friday at three. And uh, uh, where, whereas all our other executive students comes either two evenings a week or one day, that's a selection, or one day every third week. So we said this, this was a new thought we had to think. And uh, first of all, we also knew that uh, something that is, and you know the left one, how good we are and making our ordinary students finish here at Olber University, you know, you know about, but what you don't know about, that is actually that the association of lawyers and economists in Denmark actually made a survey last year where in, within my f uh, subjects, it's actually quite normal that people that pay universities to get executive education actually pay somebody else to make them even better. Can you follow me? Uh, that's called manoduction, or also in English, manoduction. And um, there is a big company, in, actually quite big, called Aspiri, that is active in Denmark. They are very not active in Olpo at all because they are modeled by whether you know with learning curve like this and forget like this doesn't wash with problem-based learning where we actually applic uh, do application and deployment of our knowledge in pro projects and whatever. And here you can see our results. If you attend CBS, 42% of all their executive students, they buy education by manadduction. Uh, next to uh, their classes. In Olbo, there might be a few that go to uh, Aarhus or something to, to, to be better, and we can never eliminate it totally, and maybe they not, would not even know what they crossed out. We don't know, but, but actually, so we, we had a very good track when we, have, when we go out and, and sell this product. Making an MBA education, that is about uh, give our students, as it's written here, a solid foundation in management and economics, and, and then there is some uh, ordinary business and management subjects included in that. 
But what would we do? Compulsory model, specialization, next year, which we call emergent management, which is a good title because we can fit whatever that is new <laughs> into that title. And uh, that is typically for all born problem based learning, make something that would last. And uh, our compulsory model, and now I come to the drill that, that, that we decided. Since one of the things that, and I can tell you, I have, I had a, what do we call it, a diversion for five years to Copenhagen Business School. And what I saw there was every time MBA students came there, they actually saw new faces. They also come in three-day model. They saw new faces. They have even got in the education management system, not Moodle, but something like that. They have got a, a blah, 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 blah from the professor. Uh, we're looking forward to see you, please read. All that kind of BS we all can make. But what we actually decided upon was, except the very first time our students meet, they should preferably always meet a person that is heading the next model they have seen before. Can you follow that idea? So just imagine, and I don't would like to run you through all these models and the subjects, but let's say the first model, which is strategy. The next one is management, accounting, and control of that. Actually, that model module here starts Wednesday afternoon, stops Friday at 12, which is the afternoon, and then the team manager running the next model actually comes and starts up his next subject. They see the face, they can build up expectations. He can tell them what his expectation is, which articles to read, and how well you should prepare that, and how poorly you can read that, right? And he would give, which, and th this is what we call our uh, invention for that training, which has proved out, and we have developed it furthermore, but he actually gives his excitement, not from his subject, but to his main class next time. You understand what I mean? Assignment, task, whatever. And they could be very different. That would actually, when people meet up next time uh, with him, uh, and here you can see I have made, made this is an actually scheme for a three-day module. You can see lecture, 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 boom, seminar four starts. Uh, and they, have, uh, they see new faces, and, but, and they got uh, the, the task, the assignment. But when they come next time, he can build the students' responses, the assignments, into the discussions of his next lecture. That means, he, he, yes, he might have made his slides, but he can, he can actually adhere and join the responses he have got into his verbal and his discussions. You understand that? Mm -hmm. So actually, the students do not need to get an individual feedback for what they have given in, because the feedback would come over time. Many teachers would do that anyway, just, but, but you can build it in into the lecture. And it makes it also more, let's call it, more compelling to, to work with that. And, just for, for, for your knowledge and uh, background, emergent management takes up all the education of year two. If you specialize in financial uh, or com commercial banking, which is my subject, you take the two first lessons with the rest, and then you have your two own, and then we have the only one banking MBA in the world. We call this assignments done forward, since uh, conceptually, the meet the teacher, they have, may, might have some reading, for the, to, for the four hour module, but the, the, the deliverable would be next time, and they would, they would totally, expectations would be um, coordinated between lecturer and those who to attend, which is always a big problem with students first time they see somebody. Uh, assignments done forward, I, I can say for the tutors, the, for the teacher, the students are more attentive and they put already, when they come to the class, their own perspectives into that. And uh, I, I have to give you that uh, you might say, some of you, yeah, yeah, but this is over. our average age for these are 40 years uh, on, on MBA. You might say they are a little more cheeky and they would tell 
us as the lecturers what they mean and what they maintain. Yes, they would, but we have actually tried that on one of our normal um, uh, 120 uh, ECTSs, uh, Kent Merck in strategy and organization, actually try to move assignments forward and it actually works. But uh, for us as lecturers, the outcome of what we are going in and doing might not be what we have expected, since uh, there is, an, let's call it, an uncontrollable element in it. And uh, we enhance uh, this, and this is something we have started from the very beginning, but we are using that a little more intense now. We have in enhanced this by making, forming the students into study groups, where we more or less, we don't control it, but hope they would see each other, that could be by Skype or something else, and discuss the assignments. So actually, they come as individual, very prepared, and they come as groups coordinated in, in, into, into the seminar. And uh, one thing that's very, 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 very nice for us to see with this, we have around half of all our students, or oh, sorry, Less than half of our students come from Aalborg University have never been anything, any way near to problem-based learning before, and we do not see any difference in their outcome. And uh, problem-based learning is actually very, very easy to catch up on. Uh, but uh, we need to have a, let's call it a, a hard hand and say this is the way we want, want, you, want it to be done, and more or less co controlled in a, let's call it, in a gentle way. So uh, what I came with here, that was actually one thing. We, uh, assignments done forward uh, is, is also one, one part of problem-based learning. And you know the manual which I, sh I showed you before. Uh, we all know that uh, well, it was a US professor that made it some years ago. Uh, we actually just checked up and say, what can we get out of that? Since having grown up in Olbo, as many of you, you know what happens is many would say problem-based learning, that is something about group work. Well, which for us in this room, that could be anything that makes a meaning and a good balance between application and study work. One thing I can tell you we have enhanced uh, our total program with now, that is those teachers of us that get the best evaluation, and we evaluate every module down to each teacher level every time they sign up. We send out a survey exact. We have actually uh, asked, what, what is this about? And uh, most of our best evaluated te teachers we have now started to giving, give and sorry, I call it a prize, but that is because it's considered a prize. Actually, we go to a couple of dates uh, each to Harvard Business School for learning to lecture in cases. Many would say cases, that is an incumbent, an inherent thing of problem-based learning. But actually, having been there two days, it costs an arm and a leg to go there. It's, it's a nice trip, but it's also a nice prize since there is nothing more high that an already well-evaluated teacher can get that even better scores when he comes back from his students. You understand what I mean about that? And, and you, some of you might say, why don't you take those who really need an improvement? We won't, because they can improve themselves on campus. Here, Here's ma many good suggestions for them, since you are not getting enough out of a two-day course at Harvard if you don't have a very, very good response already. So it's not because it's close for somebody, but they need to qualify. And that is also their requirement. That was me. Any questions? Any questions for us? How will these assignments look like? Is it to read articles and discuss, or is it cases? It, it, actually, it is those who own the modules' discretion what he would do. An assignment could, do, could be, when Uffe was there, one assignment was we actually gave them a link to a Oscar a documentary film that was Inside Job, that was a financial movie, where the, teach, where the lecturer actually said, see this movie, and here is my five questions. Somebody might say, next time you are in the position of giving a, the management group an argument about make a PowerPoint. And then they should be ready to say, up. You, class, rest, we are the management group. 
So assignments could be very, very different. But best when the assignments could be enjoyed, let's use that expression, by the community. Wh whoever. So, so, so the form would not be, not, not, be, not be that much writing projects between and, and long tasks, something that can be presented, bam, out on the roll. Since our focus on such an education is making people better, having a top level overview, being able to give instruction to, the, to each of the different, let's call it subjects, and where to mask your powers. But, but at their discretions, but as, as education grows older, people quickly know what works and what does not work as well. Uh, I, I would say uh, one thing that you should not neglect, that is if you take an MBA class, uh, you, are, you are actually lectured in two years or one and a half years, 224 hours. Our normal 60 ECTS Kent Merck student is only getting 160 hours in, 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 in 60 ECTS. So it is people that is working that is actually getting at least the load of, uh, of, uh, of the classroom equivalent as, as the full-time students. So we have to, when we make assignments, we could not make them as, as much homework as the ordinary student. It's simply not possible. We, we wouldn't get them three days a month if we did that. But you all will come. <laughs> and it's good for our business with internal money as well. <laughs> Tack! <laughs>